Enchanted Tiki Talk is brought to you by Kingdom Strollers. Our premium stroller and crib rentals are delivered straight to your Disney or Orlando area resort. It couldn't be easier. Book yours at KingdomStrollers.com. And Mouse Pros. Let our travel specialists plan your next vacation. Our concierge level service gives you the perfect hassle-free vacation. Get your free quote from Sean or any of our magical agents at MousePros.com. And now, it's show time! Your attention, please. One show for you to see. One for you and everyone. Oh, look at all the people. Pay attention, it's show time. I am always ready, as you say, to put on the show. My goodness, you're all staring at us. We better start the show rolling. Wait, wait. We forgot to wake up the glee club. Aloha, come to the Tiki Room. Get your expialidocious tickets right here. Hello and welcome to Enchanted Tiki Talk. This is episode 280 for the week of April 24th, 2019. And this week on the show, with Easter behind us, yeah, and, and Keith's birthday <laughs> being today, and he's been not feeling well, he's not able to make it. So I brought in a, I don't want to say friend... But uh, I don't even know what the right word would be. A friend of me, maybe. But uh, it's Doug from WW Main Street Podcast. What's going on, Doug? Hey, I consider you my friend. I'm learning something here now. I thought we were friends. <laughs> well, What's you, going on? Uh, you know how it is. You're from South Jersey. I'm from North Jersey. I don't. I don't know if we could really be friends. Yeah, we can. It just as long as you know the Giants stink, you're fine. Oh come on. Now. <laughs> we, listen. At least I root for a team that plays and is from New Jersey. You know, my, no. my my money goes to the team in New Jersey. You're sending money over to a whole other state. Yeah, well, your team still won't call itself from New Jersey, so we're both blanked, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they play in New Jersey, but they're calling themselves the New York Giants. I would hate them just for that. <laughs> That's a good point. It's a good yeah, point. but yeah. they, I mean, I think that we should have got one team. The Jets or the Giants should be called New Jersey. I mean, the stadium's in New Jersey. Yeah, we should have got at least one of them. Yeah, I would even took the Jets. I mean, at least we got some skin in the game. <laughs> it's true. But right. I'm finally glad to be on. Yeah, we've been trying for a while, and you keep uh, pushing it off, pushing it off, saying you're working, you're you're getting your nails done, and. You know. <laughs> hey. Hey, I like to look good. I'm a contractor that looks sexy. You know what I'm saying? I heard I heard the last show you were saying how good-looking contractors were. I enjoyed that. <laughs> no, I, I think it was more IT guys, not contractors. No, you talked about roofers and everything else. I was oh, like, damn, true. he's talking about me saying how <laughs> handsome I am. <laughs> Jeez, ew. So and I like I like that. Oh, that's good. I, I'm glad you made yourself feel good for that uh, brief moment in time. Somebody has to. <laughs> All right, question for you. Uh huh. You go to your local pizza parlor, right? You order a pie, right? Mm-hmm. And you're getting it to go. He gives you the pie right on the table. And you go, Where's my box? Oh, you want a box? It's extra. How? I tell him to keep the pie and give him my money back. Okay. That happens in Disney, though. Where at? It? Everywhere. Okay, so that, that analogy comes down to. Your Halloween parties, <laughs> your after-hour parties, and in that regard is that you're paying to get into the park, right? But then you get kicked out unless you pay extra to spend the rest of the night in the park. It, it's kind of, it's like a, it's not a great analogy, but in a way it works. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're, I think you're just trying to fire me off. <laughs> I, I thought I was coming on here to be calm cool collective i was almost ready at the beginning of the show to know hello everybody welcome to the wdw <laughs> i don't know how to be the guest on a show you know what i'm saying no i understand no but no dude did you see more and more of those parties it's getting ridiculous it's out of hand yeah it is you know it has its place and it has its time i've done the after hours event and i've talked about it on the show and i feel like after our events work on short trips You're going there for three days, four days, something like that. And you're not going to have a whole lot of time to explore the parks. But when it comes to August having Halloween parties and then 
all of a sudden November 1st, November 3rd, whatever it is, they start having Christmas parties. It's a bit too much because they're having three, they're usually four parties a week. That's hard, man. That's really hard on a short trip. A hundred percent. And the thing that I've said the last time, oh my, I said it on the show a few times, not the last time, many times. I mean, I know people's getting tired, but uh, I see uh, moms in August at the park. I still want to enjoy my summer. I know. Don't push it. I mean, it's bad enough. Us from the north, we're only a, at that point. We're only a few months away from freezing our asses off. Uh, exactly, a hundred percent. So why do I want? And I love the Halloween decorations. It's my wife's favorite time of year, fall. You know, with with the season and everything else like that. But even her, we're down there for my birthday in August, and we're like seeing uh, uh, flowers for Halloween. It, I, I, it's not, it's it's off putting. I don't enjoy it. I want I want summer. I want funnel cake roaming around. Not I don't want mums. I know. You got to be careful what you say, though, because you know what's going to happen. It's going to be summer parties for Uncle Sam and 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 yeah. whoever, you know. So, well, I've been saying that on the show for about two years now. I'm waiting for them to do the the summer food and wine, the barbecue. Yeah, I know. What's, what, what's going to stop them from doing that? I mean, they actually should, to be honest with you, because they're not taking the booths away no more. So just put, make it Fourth of July, make it the barbecue fest. Yeah, and have barbecue from around the world. And different kind of outdoor cooking from around the world. It's it's at some point it's going to happen. It's only a matter of time. It's once they no. once they once the revenue starts drying up with all the parties that they have now or or festivals, they're going to add another one. Well, did you see Disney's granddaughter uh, Roy's uh, was uh, calling Bob Iger money grubbing too? I enjoyed it. Yeah, I saw that. But she made a good point where she could have. I think she said they could have given everybody at Disneyland. Uh, was it a dollar raise or something like that? And he still would have had money left over? Oh, he they gave everybody at Disneyland. I think they said a 20% raise is what she said. Right. If they gave everybody a 20% raise, he would have still got over a $10 million bonus. That's crazy. Yeah, that's and the thing crazy. of it is, and, and that's where it's the Disney difference. If, if That's when the family was in charge. It felt different down there. Oh, yeah. It d- didn't feel like a corporation. Even though it was, it still felt family oriented more than i want every like i told you they should have wreck it ralph at every resort before you leave he spins you upside down and shakes all the money out of your pocket that's what do you <laughs> it's gonna happen don't worry that's when you have to carry credit cards only yeah they've taken a lot of my ideas but i appreciate you waiting for me i had to come home i cooked i i did barbecue chicken fingers on the grill they were oh, nice. good yeah yeah some fries on the grill and some barbecue chicken fingers came out awesome were they homemade fries or frozen fries? They were frozen, but they still came out. You ever do fries on the grill? Oh yeah, I, there's um, I forgot there's a there's one brand that I use. I forget who it is. Um, they're usually they're a little bit fatter, and mm-hmm. I throw them on the grill. They're great. Yeah, I do the waffles too a lot. Oh, do you? Okay, those are good. Yeah. I always like waffle fries. Yeah, you put them on the second level. Yeah. And while you're cooking your other, everything comes out good. I. I love this time of year, don't you? It, 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 we, hopefully, we get a spring here this year, Sean. I, I think it was today, and then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to get? Five 70-degree days, and we're going to go to 90 again? Yeah, exactly. That's usually what happens. So, And then I also heard your cheap food. Uh, the sliders, either the Brown Derby or Nomad Lounge, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that one works too. And that also becomes a shareable plate. Yes. You know, especially if you want to do that for lunch... Uh, it definitely works in that regard. That's a good one. Yeah, you could do either or. Like two of you get a shareable plate, and it would even be, you know, you get two two small plates and a drink, and you're living large at the Nomad. Have you eaten there yet? I have not, no. Not with the kids. They don't want to sit there. That's that's the problem. Yeah, well, man, you got to get the grandparents down there, Sean. Uh, yeah, that, sometimes that's more of a headache. <laughs> well, you get a night or two. <laughs> you, you can edit that out if you want to. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not on my show. There's no editing over here. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, she can hear it. It's fine. She doesn't like no. me anyway, so. Oh, that makes two of us. <laughs> I had to put that in there. You know no, what I'm saying? I, know. I get it. I, you deserve it. Okay. So what are we doing now? Uh, what are you going to put me on the spot with? I'm um, waiting for the booby trap to pop nah, out. No booby trap. No booby trap. But, uh, you know, why don't you tell everybody out there, since you haven't been on the show before, everybody, tell everybody out there a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your podcast. Well, our podcast is WDW Main Street Podcast. Uh, 
I started it what about seven, eight years ago. We're 500 and some episodes in. I heard you talking about going back to episode one. You'd really want to torture somebody like that? I know I wouldn't <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> but anyway, we're in the 500 and some episodes. And my our show was like two guys sitting at the bar, two blue-collar blue guys that actually went to Disney World and did enjoy it because – for a while there, I mean, it's getting cooler now, Sean. I think you see that. But back in the day, 20 years ago, all the guys on the construction site, you told them you're going to Disney. They'd have some words to say right. to you. But that was my idea. It was the Blue Collar podcast of, uh, you know, the construction worker that goes to Disney World. And he was shocked he liked it. And uh, that was back in 97. And I've been drinking the Kool-Aid ever since. <laughs> It's sad. I could, and uh, you talked about retirement on your last show. Ain't that the truth? If we all stop spending the money on Disney, we all be retired now. Exactly. It's so true. It, it, and the crazy thinking. thing is, like, I'm DVC, and I can make a profit off of my DVC that I bought ten years ago. That's crazy. Yeah, you really could. And the sad part is, is you don't get you don't get the perks that you got ten years ago, do you? Um. I mean, there's a couple things that have gone down. I don't have the valet parking any parking anymore. But no, um, it's right to take that. And and do you agree with me, Sean? We talked about it on the last show. Do you don't do you think that Disney like they dropped your value by saying that if you buy resale that you don't get the perks that if you buy new? I think that's hogwash. Uh, the thing with Disney is they definitely devalue their brand quite often. Removing, I, I understand why they are are doing that because they want to prevent people from going the resale route because they want to make as much money as they possibly can. I understand that, but you are devaluing it because in your resale is not worth as much as it was because it's of not. It. It's but that's how I got my foot in the door was via resale and I was already grandfathered in. But a lot of people they'll buy resale and later on they'll just buy some points from Disney. It's harder now. It used to be twenty five points. I think it's seventy five now that you have to buy to get the the benefits from from DVC. But they de- de- they devalue the brand all the time, especially if you take a step away from DVC from their regular resorts. Look at it. You have to pay for parking now. No, hundred percent. You know you <laughs> uh, you're paying for. Um, uh, you're not paying for. You have additional hotels that get fast pass, that get extra magic hours. Extra magic hours is going away at night, so you're oh, devaluing yeah. your brand again. There's so many ways that they're constantly devaluing the brand, and they just are like, oh well, you know, and they'll bring out the line, it's industry industry standard. And you've brought out the thing where it's industry standard that they give you continental breakfast at your hotels. Yeah, they, yeah. a lot of hotels do that. <laughs> There's a lot of industry standards that Disney does not follow. Disney used to break the mold and you see everybody used to follow disney why do you think so many places out there call you a guest when you go into a hotel a restaurant a shopping place oh you know we have guests in here you know or welcome home i hear that all the time now that's because yeah. D- disney was making a, a a precedent for everybody else but now disney's following these other companies to to make more money yeah i just like i said they 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 argue their point if it's if it if it's to their point they, right. they talk on both sides just like uh my wife was telling me the other day that they were something else about ziploc bags that they were giving them away uh, selling them somewhere or or some oh there was an advertisement with disney with ziploc on tv and really uh, now yeah. you're telling me I, I i gotta recycle but now you're gonna be on a commercial with ziploc right. how is that i mean they're so hypocritical in so many ways it's sad i know i know but yeah, I feel bad for you guys. Like, I haven't bought because I'm a travel agent like you are, Sean. Yeah. So, I I mean, I stay at Riverside for 50 60% off all the time and boardwalk and all the hotels. So, I never felt the need. I always planned on moving to Florida. So, I said, am I really going to use it if I move there? Right. And with me being a travel agent, I could still get discounts with moving down there. Plus, also, if you are if you live in Florida, you get the Florida uh, discount the, right. the resident Florida yep. resident discount so that's the reason why we didn't but I feel bad for you guys because it does if you can't get the same amount of perks as out of resale you it, it, it did take the value down for you guys and I feel bad because they're constantly taking it away I know I mean I know it made Dennis mad that they're taking stuff away right. all the time oh yeah it's and, and unfortunately like you said you know we're drinking the Kool-Aid and, and because if we keep going it's not going to stop 
Well, all I know is they haven't created a fentanyl for Disney yet because we're all <laughs> sick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we're, we're, we're all hooked. Yep, I know. We really are. As much as I moan, scream, and rant, I can't wait to go again. <laughs> you're, you're preaching to the choir. Yep. So what are we going to do tonight, Sean? Uh, well, first, I'm going to take a quick break. I'll send it over to Steve for the news for this week. Steve from Disney Diary here. This is What's News. The first Mickey Mouse themed ride through attraction that was supposed to open this fall at Hollywood Studios has been moved back to spring of 2020. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was originally scheduled to open this fall, but in a release announcing the attraction was going to Disneyland, Disney snuck in that the Disney World version will not open until 2020. No more info was released. I know I, for one, am disappointed. Meanwhile, the Rivers of Light show at Disney's Animal Kingdom will be introducing additional nature imagery from Disney nature films as well as Disney characters and new music. Rivers of Light, We Are One will debut Memorial Day weekend and focus on our connection with animals and the emotions and milestones we all share. More information is being released about the special Disney Villains After Hours event. Hades will take charge of the new stage show, Villains Unite the Night. The After Hours Especially Ticketed event at the Magic Kingdom will take place from June 6th to August 8th on select nights. On the castle stage, three times a night, a DJ will introduce your caretaker for the evening, Hades, who will arrive in a burst of blue flames. He will sit atop his dark throne, waiting with Meg by his side for the alignment of the five planets and fight off other Disney villains to rule the universe. Just another night at the Magic Kingdom. If you're staying at Disneyland Resort Hotel from May 31st to June 23rd, you should be receiving an email explaining how your special four-hour reservation window works to get into the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Those staying on resort will get an automatic reservation. You see, there will be no standby line to get into the land during that time. Those not staying on property will be able to find out May 2nd how to get a reservation or who they need to throw into the Sarlacc pit to be able to walk into the new land. And speaking of Sarlacc, I bet you didn't see that one coming. The first installment in the five-part Marvel comic series, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, is finally out. This is the official tie-in comic, and here's what we've learned after reading it. First, the residents of Batuu are called Batuans. Second, the big bad threat that is coming from the out- to the outpost is the Red Fury. The Red Fury is an elite First Order squad. What they have planned and what they are going to do to smoke out the resistance is probably something that will be ongoing story in the new land. And third, we found out we are most likely going to see a baby Sarlacc in Doc Odnar's Den of Antiquities. For those who need a refresher, a Sarlacc is a multi-tentacled beast that first appeared in Return of the Jedi. Remember the pit Jabba the Hutt dropped Luke, Han, and Chewie into? And that big thing with the tentacles coming out? That was a Sarlacc. The majority of the comic was showing the backstory of how Han Solo and Chewbacca smuggled the baby Sarlacc to Doc Ocknar. Please visit us at DisneyDiary.com for the latest news. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Disney Diary. Now, back to the Tiki 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 Hut. All right, we are back from our break. Thank you, Steve, for the news again this week. All right, so this week on the show, what we're going to talk about is something that some people may get upset with, uh, and that's going to be... Taking Magical Express, taking Uber, renting a car, using the Disney minivan, what do you think is the best option go with, with the with you know as of as of April 24th, 2019, what do you think is the best option to use in Walt Disney World? It's all fine well, and dandy, you know, to use Magical Express and whatever, renting a car. I mean, it's not going to work for everybody. So I understand that, I get that, but what do you think, with the, the current situation at Disney, the way things are going, what do you think is the best way to, what, what's some of the best solutions for it? Well, first of all, you have somebody on the show that never gets upset, so I don't know why you're saying <laughs> that. I'm always calm, cool, and collective. I don't know what you're talking about upset. <laughs> but I'll try to pretend to be that way if you want me to. No, I uh, honestly, if it's all, er, all, everything being equal, I prefer to have my own car right. on property. Because I, you know, we've learned these tricks on where to park, where to go, what to do. And the sad part, though, is 
I love having the car, but Disney's starting to squeeze you out of being out and go to this resort or that resort. You know, they're tr- they're on to our tricks right. of letting you into certain resorts. Like the last trip when we stayed at the house, I had a fight to get into the boardwalk. I was actually meeting people at the ESPN club, and the, and the lady thought I was being shady about it. Oh, really? She thought I was doing the whole parking scheme. You know, I was staying right. somewhere else. I said, listen, I am going to the ESPN club to meet friends. Why won't you let me in? I think you're parking a good. I said, I'm by myself. Like, 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 what is the deal here? Like, I said, can I speak to a manager? And she goes, go ahead and park. Because right. I was going to, like I said, I don't fight or argue or anything. But at this situation, I was going to fight to the bitter end if you follow me. Because I was put off because they are on our tricks now. Same thing we've had at the On Beach Club a couple of times. Like, I don't, I, I said, we're going to have dinner. And the lady goes, well, I don't see any reservations because she scanned my band. Right. I said, well, so what you're trying to tell me is you don't want me going to the, to the Big River Brewing Company. You don't want me going to the ESPN Club. You don't want me going over to the Cape May Cafe. We're going to roam the boardwalk because my family hasn't. We, we like to hang out there. And we're going to grab a bite to eat. Do I have to have a reservation or do you not want my money here? Right. And then they let you in. But it's because I know all the places on there because we're addicted, like we said. Right. But a lot of people that don't know that. They're going to drive there, and if they're going to say something, you know they're going to turn around and leave the resort. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have those people that do that. And But the, also the problem is that too many people talk about the ways to get around yes. and sneak around. And that's one of those We're things. We're guilty. I, yeah. I, I don't necessarily like to do that just because I want to keep things that work yeah. in my back pocket and, and use it for myself. And but, I get you. Yeah. But and I, like I, the back pocket's empty now almost. Yeah, yeah it is. But I do, I like the idea, I've done the rental car a few times, last year we ended up doing a rental car, and I loved having a rental car. Yeah. It's it's great going, because we were coming from um, South Florida, and we, and we drove up to Orlando, and then we ended up flying out of Tampa, but it was great because I can stop at the store, I can pick up whatever I needed, you know, to, to use at the resort, especially water. Be, and because water, I think, is like three, three fifty, or maybe even four dollars in the parks now. So stopping off and getting a case of water, she can bring it into the park every day. That's not necessarily a case, but a few bottles. I mean, because I know you've done that. Oh, hundred percent. We let a little water out of the bottle, and then I freeze them. You freeze and them, and I yeah. use yeah. And then this way, they're cool all day. Yeah. So having a car, it makes it so much easier, especially getting around the to the parks. The only one that you really don't want to take it would be the Magic Kingdom, but going to some of the other parks, man, I loved. Not having to wait for the bus, I love just hopping in my car, driving over to the studios, driving over to Epcot, and driving over to... I didn't go to Animal Kingdom the last one, but it was so nice. I didn't have to worry about waiting for the bus. I didn't have to worry about anything. I might have had to walk a little bit to get to the park, but is it really that much farther than taking the bus, especially at Epcot, because you do have a long walk from the bus? Not really. So it does work out. I didn't... Sometimes it's not necessarily great at the end of the day because you're going to sit in some traffic. But still, man, it's very convenient having a car. It isn't bad because, like, with us, too, like, uh, with us knowing where to park and where to go, like, if you're staying at Epcot, if you're going to Epcot, you're really not worried about traffic because you're going to go, you know, to Yacht and Beach Club, Boardwalk, or I've even learned my lessons now where I just, a lot of the times, I've been booking meals there, so I don't have to worry about it. Right. That's the way I, I so I don't have to deal with it no more. I'll make a reservation at uh at the Big River or Flying Fish or Boardwalk. Or, you know, I mean Cape May or you know Allen Compass. We'll do because we do breakfast there a lot now. That's what I started to do too. Uh, the last few trips we started doing more breakfasts. So when we go to Magic Kingdom, I eat breakfast at the Wave. Do you? Yeah. That's smart. Well, yeah, we'll do breakfast at the Wave and then walk over to the park. Right. Yeah, and you're not doing anything wrong. You are patronizing the resort. Right. You're spending money, which I'd rather eat at the Wave than go to the park and buy. Because we've talked a million times, the Magic Kingdom has the worst food out of all four parks. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Which is kind of it's still surprising. You would think that would be their top crown jewel. Yeah, you would think, especially because I know you've talked about it. Like uh, Cinderella's Castle should be. A five-star restaurant, considering yeah, where that it is. should be that should be as good, almost as good as that Victoria Vicky and Al's. Right? Yeah, you would think about it, but no, it's not. It's just average. It's food. weird. Be- it's weird because Disneyland 
has multiple good restaurants in right. Disneyland. It's so weird how, I mean, my favorite restaurant, we've said it a million times, is Columbia Harbor House. Yeah. You know, in the Magic Kingdom. I mean, that's me and Brenda's go-to place. I mean, Be Our Guest is a beautiful restaurant, but there's way too many rules. I feel like you got to stand on one foot and hop up and down before you go in. That's true. It's true. But and I then, think at the, at the Magic Kingdom, I, I think that they don't try to make decent food or, or good restaurants because they don't need to because it's just so packed that people are just want to eat somewhere and they don't care once they're there. No. Yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, so, but yeah, we, I prefer to... Or I'll book a lunch at uh, Wilderness Lodge or book a lunch at Contemporary or Polly or you know, go to Pat's favorite place, the Polly. Or I do one of the resorts. If we're going to go there tonight, I'll book a, a dinner or lunch, late right. lunch, early dinner, and then go to see the fire. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so no, I understand. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing the wrong thing, but I also can park there. Right. And it, and it works. But we did Uber on the last trip. I would say – Rent a car one because of going to the uh, supermarket, going to the store, roaming back and forth. Because time and money, time is money. And face it, the, the buses aren't what they used to be. They Sean. are They're, not at all. I spend more uh, time waiting and than I do spending time in the Magic Kingdom a lot of times. You know, I could wait 30, 40 minutes for a bus. It just, it's out of hand. And I'm sorry for the amount of money we pay to go to Disney World. You should not have to stand on a bus. No. I'm sorry. It shouldn't have to be. And I end up getting up for an elderly woman or well, any women, but an elderly man, uh, a, a man or a woman with a child, you know, single parent that have kids that they need to sit together. I always end up standing on these buses and it, it's, it aggravates me. Yeah. And then you get the knucklehead kids at the end of the night that you really don't want to listen to. Yeah, no. <laughs> you can't avoid that one. But have you done Uber at the park yet? Oh yeah, I uh, I'm a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of the minivan service just because it's so expensive. It shouldn't cost me forty dollars to go from Magic Kingdom to say Old Key West or something like that. It shouldn't cost that much. But I am a fan of Uber because I can walk out of my room, pick the car, uh, set the car, it'll come pick me up. I don't have to worry about the bus. I don't have to worry about some of the resorts having multiple stops. I don't have to worry about stopping multiple times. And it's just going to take me... Like if you're going to the Magic Kingdom, I'll go to the Contemporary, then you have to walk from there. Yeah. But some of the other parks, man, you dropped off right in front or fairly close to the front, and it's convenient. And for 13 you know, you spent... If you, on average, it's usually, depending on where you are... Ten, eight to thirteen dollars to get to a hundred percent. You know, so yeah, it's worth we, it. We stayed at Riverside to get to the Springs was eight bucks. Right. The furthest was Animal Kingdom, which was like you said, thirteen, twelve, thirteen bucks. We spent for a week. We were down there. We spent between a buck and a half and two hundred dollars, but it was worth every penny. Oh, yeah. Because the nice thing was, and I've said a million times, like right now I'm having a beer because I'm doing the show. I'm sitting at the pub, but I drink, but I'm not a drinker. You know, I might have two, three beers a week if you follow right. me, Sean. Like tonight, I did the barbecue on the grill. I was in the mood for a beer. But I'll go three, four, five days. I'll go two weeks sometimes without a drink. When I'm at Disney World, I enjoy having – when I go out to dinner, I don't know about you. It's, it's just nice to have a drink with yeah, dinner. Yeah, it is. Yeah, without a doubt. And me and my wife, it's just the two of us. We have no kids, so we're not being irresponsible. But if I'm roaming around, if I'm at a restaurant and then we're going to roam around Epcot or the Springs and I have two beers at dinner and I want to have the third walking around the park, because I'm a two beer m limit because I do construction. You know, me and you're driving all over this state. I can't afford to have my license taken yeah, from exactly. Me. But it is nice doing Uber where if I want to have that third or fourth drink within a three or four hour span, I'm not drunk by any means. I'm not incoherent, but I, I'd be afraid to get pulled over. But it's nice to do that. No Ubers picking you up. No no right. worries. Right. And you're being responsible. Yep. And you have to remember with using Uber, you know, there's an old saying that time is money. And you taking Uber going to and from a place especially springs the springs springs is the type of place that i think uber is just made for because the buses you're going to take a bus it's a long walk to get to the buses and you might depending on where you are in uh disney springs you might get to the buses and you think you're there and then you still have another five to eight minute walk to go around to get the buses so in that, that time frame, you can usually walk over to where the Ubers are and just hop onto an Uber and, and you're gone and you're at your resort in 10 minutes as opposed to maybe waiting 10, 20 minutes for a bus. And that's all money. That's all time that you have to do something else, especially going to the place. So It was phenomenal. It is. Uber. It's great. You know, I 
it, it adds up, but even that, if you don't want to rent a car and you just want to use Uber, it'll cost you just about the same as, as a, a week's rental on a small car You're using Uber every day. So why not do it? Take advantage of that. Oh, yeah. Well, this is what we, we even took Uber to a supermarket on the last trip. Oh, did you? Yeah. What we did is he, one dropped us off. As we were getting ready to go through checkout, I called the other one. It was waiting out front. Yeah. See, that's, I left that works. Now, now you can text back and forth. Yes. I, I texted the one the guy, the gentleman that was coming. We're in line at the supermarket. If we're a minute late, wait out front. We'll be out. And they waited for me. The guy had the trunk open. Oh, wow. Nice. I felt special. He got $5. There you go. For and, an $8 Uber. You know, but right. it was worth it. I didn't have to worry. He took me right to my front door. And when I carried the groceries in, I had to go park the car because he pulled right. me up to the... You understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know how you are at the resort. You'll pull with the little parking area that you can unload at and then you go find a spot. Right. I didn't have to worry about that. And it was awesome. Like we did Ubers to Disney Springs a couple times and took the boats home. Because the boats take their time. It's a nice romantic cruise down Riverside, down the Sascola River. But it was nice because sometimes you want to get to a reservation in time. It's faster than waiting for the boat, too. Right, exactly. Because you'll even wait for those boats at the launch dock. Yeah, they say they're every 20 minutes, usually. And they're pretty close to being on time. Yeah, but I usually get there when I got to wait for the next one. Yeah, so you get minutes. there, you get to wait 19 minutes, yeah. Yes, yeah, so one's just pulling away as so yep. we're walking down the boat ramp. Yep. But, no, I mean, rent a car I love. Uber second. Buses never again. Magic Express, I liked, except for I got an idiot sitting next to me on the last trip, and my wife was digging her fingernails in me not to say anything. <laughs> I remember you uh, telling this story. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, yeah, I mean, Magical Express, I will say, that runs like clockwork. Have you ever had a problem with it, Sean? Um, once we had, like, an hour wait to get onto the bus. And okay. That's probably the worst one I've had, and then we had to wait four or five stops before we actually got to our resort. So it was a long time frame. Most of the time, I'm on the bus within 20 minutes, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went right on the last trip. It was awesome. Even leaving it, I mean, it seemed like we made it to and from, like, in record time this last trip. Did you? But I asked an Uber guy, he said it's like 30 bucks for the trip to the airport. Now, that might even be worth it, too, because you're not worried about getting up to two hours early. You leave yeah, that's it. The, that's, that's the thing. It's it's like we did it on our trip. My, Sharon and I, we had a, a flight at 6 o'clock in the morning. So we Ubered. We, there's no way we're taking a, the bus because the bus is going to pick up at 3 o'clock in the morning. We're like, forget that. So we had Uber pick us up at 4 o'clock in the morning. We got to the airport at 430 we had TSA pre-check anyway, so we don't really have to worry about the lines too much. They actually let you do that? I wouldn't think they'd oh, let yeah. you. Yeah. I, I, and uh, I'll we had to no call problem. TSA and tell them what I know about you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think You're from like Jersey, man. Bucks. I didn't think anybody from Jersey was allowed to get Express TSA. That's what they told me at the airport. Yeah, You're from I, Jersey. I hold, my, I hold my true accent back. You know. Hey, uh, you it's... got a problem with me? You know, How you doing? How you doing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. I, I, we didn't get that either time. We had to go through. How do you? I, I haven't. Even, we've never had that. Express TSA. I've never. I've never even had that. Yeah, it's if you do. If you're gonna fly a couple times a year, it's good for five years. So for eighty-five bucks for five years is worth it. Okay, so that's how you get it. You got to pay extra for it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't know that. See, yep. I drive most of the time, and we have a new car, but we always. That's the other thing. I rent every time we drive to Florida. Right. And a little trick that you know why I do that? Save mileage. No, no, not no. This is the reason why. You rent a car. Okay, if you have a brand new car and you drive down, even though the car only has five, six, seven thousand miles on it's under warranty, if that car breaks down, you gotta deal with the dealership out of uh, state. Right. Now it's gonna take away your trip. Yep. Even though it's covered, they're gonna give you a rent a car while you're there. If your car's broken down, you're still going to be stressing over. Is it going to be fixed by the time I yeah, got to go? exactly. Home? Right. Because I had this happen. I had a brand new Chevy pickup. It was only two, three months old, Sean. My wife's lab said they were shutting down for 4th of July for two weeks. So my brother was down in Disney. I said, "Hun, let's go surprise my brother. My godchildren were down there. So me and her booked the trip. We went down for the week. We're headed down. My transmission went, and, and the truck only had 7,000 miles. Oh, wow. Transmission was slipping in Delaware. Jeez. So I turned around and came back. I called, the, they dropped the truck off. I rented a car. We drove it down. And I said after that, 
Luckily, I was in Delaware. Now, if that would have happened in North Carolina or South Carolina, I'd have sit and waited for my truck to be fixed. Right. So it's worth a few hundred dollars this way because I had a car break down when I was in Orlando. I got in a big fight with the guy at the Enterprise. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> no this, is what, this is what the guy tells me, though, Sean, and tell me you wouldn't be mad. Transmission went on the car. Same thing. He comes, picks me up at the resort to swap out the cars. They tow that one. I made it there, dude. It was like the Huxtables. Transmission slipping. I'm on the floor letting the, the transmission grind going through Orlando. Uh, we get in the, we pull up the riverside like the Huxtables. The car's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> this car, it was a, it was a Pontiac uh, Sunfire. Uh, it, only, it was brand new. Same thing, less than 10,000 miles. And I get it there. They come, they co we make it in, we check into the room, we call Enterprise, they come over, the, the guy picks me up and goes, when you're done, we'll call you and you can bring the car back. I said, I have no idea where I'm going, I'm on vacation, you're going to bring the car, because they're going to give me a new car, I said, you're going to bring that car back to me, and then I'll leave, what, Sean, would you want to be at Epcot, and they call you up and say your car's ready and you have to go pick it up? Yeah, no. So we got in this big fight, well, the guy's arguing with me in the car. And he's being a real butthead. So, and then we get to the place. He holds the door for me, acting all nice. So I said, where's the manager at? I said, why ain't you treat me like the idiot? You treated me like the whole way here. Like I threw him right under the bus, dude. <laughs> but anyway, I got a, I got a Chrysler Sebring convertible instead of this little oh, pot nice. Sunfire. So they called me up. The Sunfire wasn't done in time. They offered to pay for us to stay for two more days. And I told him, I said, be it your salesman eric was being such a butthead no we're gonna drive that car home and you're gonna have to figure out how to get it back down here <laughs> so and i was in business for myself at the time i could have stayed two more days because my wife had another week off right but you want to know what ended up happening we get the car home this wonderful girl at the enterprise here she was a sweetheart I've, we've booked from her before here her parents live in florida she got to drive the car down to bring it back and she got a free vacation because we brought the car home really so it worked out good it was like kind of karma for them we did the right thing by leaving early and this girl got to visit her parents for a week wow that's great so but yeah the reason you should rent though don't drive your own car because if, if it does break down you're gonna have to deal with all that aggravation right right i think it's worth the couple if you can afford to go to disney pay the extra couple hundred dollars to rent a car if you're gonna drive down yep. plus you're not worried about it yeah, you know, if it, you leave, yeah, you know, it, it. There's no worries. It's all, it's all in them. Yeah. So. All right. Closing thoughts. Closing thoughts. Don't take the buses ever again. <laughs> <laughs> they need, dude, they need to hire more employees. They need to have they more bus. They need to have more bus drivers. They do. I mean, I agree. back in the day, you used to love the bus, didn't you, Sean? Oh yeah, I did. Th that was part of the charm of Disney. I used to always say, you know, I drive you know, two hours every day or whatever it is going to Disney is a vacation where I don't have to drive. Now it's more stressful me going on the bus, worrying about how long I'm going to have to wait for, for the bus to get there. How many stops are we going to make? Am I going to be able to get a spot to sit down? How am I going to wait to go back to my hotel? I'm tired. Am I going to be able to sit? It's, it's so much more stressful taking the bus now. I remember back in the day, and this is no lie. There'd be two magic kingdom buses pulling up at one time. Do you yeah. remember that? Oh yeah. I, and we'd people. be the only ones on the bus. Yep. Six, seven people. And another final thought, the minivans, just like Disney's been doing, it started off at $25 no matter where you were going. Did it or did it not? It did. And that and that was $20 was at the point where it's almost worth it. I, 15 is like I'll do it every day. 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, now where it's at, no, I would not do it. No, it was a $25 flat fee wherever you wanted to go on property. Yep. I was okay with that. What did it take them? Five, six months, four or five months, and they had to raise the price already? Yeah, if that. I mean, what we should all do is buy yourself some decals, little polka dots. And when you call your <laughs> Uber, just stick the polka dots on the Right, Uber. exactly. <laughs> I mean, save yourself some money. But we have to do this again, Sean. We have to start uh, doing collaborating on some more shows. I yeah, think it's a lot to. of fun. We need to. Why don't you... You tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Uh, you can find me at Grumpy6767 and WDW Main Street on Twitter, on Facebook at WDW Main Street, and uh, you can find our podcast at WDW Main Street on iTunes 
and everywhere else you get your podcast. And I warn you, I wouldn't listen to it. Yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> I don't know why I do. Because yeah. you don't know what I'm going to say next, correct? No, that's the best part. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's it's fly by the seat of our pants, buddy. But <laughs> I, I think we have some fun on the show. And I, we do. you got to admit, we do tell the truth on the show, how we feel. We don't hold nothing back, do we? No, you do not. It's the no. truth. It's actual. You know, it's how we feel. But I really love. I want you to come on, do the news with us, and uh, I want you to come on and do our little restaurant thing that uh, I do with John. Yeah, I'll have you I'm sit good. in, and I'll I'll read two menus, and most of the time, you think you like the one restaurant better, and you were going to like the other, and you can't believe it when you're done. Right. Yep. So, I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, you do a great job over here, Sean. It's nice to have a brother in the podcast community. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Be good, my friend. All right, take it easy. That's going to do it for this week. But first, we want to thank our sponsors, Kingdom Strollers. Get your premium stroller and crib rentals at KingdomStrollers.com. Let the vacation experts at MousePros.com help plan your next perfect Disney vacation. Don't forget to check out our store at RedBubble.com slash Tiki Talk Podcast. You can connect with us on social media. Find us on Facebook and the channel Tiki Talk, Instagram, and Twitter at Tiki Talk Podcast. You can also email Sean and Keith at Sean at Enchanted Tiki Talk or Keith at Enchanted Tiki Talk or even Podcast at Enchanted Tiki Talk. You can leave us a message on the Tiki Talk hotline at 256 for my Tiki. That's 256 469 8454. If you enjoy the show, please take the time to rate us on iTunes. You can find me on Twitter at 1 Minute Disney Dream. That's 1 M-I-N, one M- one Disney Dream, MouseWorldVacations.com. You can find Keith at Dole Whip Daily. I want to thank Steve for giving us the news again this week. And check out his site at uh, DisneyDiary.com. And I also want to thank my good friend Doug for joining us this week. I appreciate it. Check out his podcast at WWN Street. Alan, take it away. Thanks for listening this week. For Sean and Keith, I'm Alan. And this has been Enchanted Tiki Talk. Aloha. Enchanted Tiki Talk has been brought to you by MousePros.com. Let us plan your perfect Disney vacation. And by KingdomStrollers.com for all your premium stroller and crib rental needs. For all of us here, I'm David Benter. Thanks for listening to Enchanted Tiki Talk.